Hello everyone. I'm Captain Vijay and once again I welcome you on board in the series of flights to study meteorology for DGCA CPL and ATPL examination. Today we will fly through the topic of geostrophic wind and gradient wind. So fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off. Wind plays very important and critical role at all stages of flying. You may like to watch my YouTube video named Flying versus Wind where I have explained the effect of wind at all stages of flight in detail. And now let's get back to our original topic, geostrophic wind and gradient wind. There are many types of wind. Some are local and some cover large geographical areas. Wind speed and direction is majorly controlled by pressure gradient force and Coriolis force. To make mathematical model of winds for accurate prediction based on synoptic situation, geostrophic and gradient wind has been formulated. So geostrophic and gradient winds are just mathematical modeling of winds for forecasting and prediction and in real world the result may vary from predicted values based on the local conditions. Now let us discuss these winds one by one. Geostrophic wind. Geostrophic wind is modeled considering the situation when only pressure gradient force and Coriolis force are present. Pressure gradient force is created due to pressure difference between two places or areas. So closer the spacing between two isobars, higher the pressure difference and higher the pressure gradient force and stronger will be the wind speed. Wind start blowing from high to low pressure area but within 24 hours under the influence of Coriolis force it starts curving to the right in northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere and finally it gets parallel to isobars. Pressure gradient force and Coriolis force balances out each other. Wind direction is straight and parallel along parallel isobars. Geostrophic wind speed will be higher near equator as compared to near poles for the same pressure difference since Coriolis force is weak near equator. And by now you would be knowing that Coriolis force is zero at equator and maximum at poles. For geostrophic winds, as you go to higher altitude, at the same location, wind speed will increase. This is due to the fact that atmospheric density reduces as you go higher, so less resistance to the motion of the wind and hence higher will be the speed of winds. Wind is considered to be geostrophic above friction layer, starting from two to 3000 feet and goes all the way up to tropopause. Since below friction layer due to local condition, terrain and obstructions, the mathematical modeling will not work out and will give incorrect results. Further, wind is considered to be geostrophic only above 15 degree north and below 15 degree south latitude. Since below 15 degree latitude, the Coriolis force is considered to be negligible. So the surface winds as well as winds within plus minus 15 degree latitude is not considered to be geostrophic. Geostrophic wind will always blow along straight and parallel isobars under the balance forces of pressure gradient force and Coriolis force. Wind direction can be found using by Bellot's law which states that if an observer is standing in northern hemisphere with his back towards the wind, the low pressure area will be on his left and reciprocal will be the result in the southern hemisphere. Questions invariably come during examination on interpretation of by Bellot's law. And sometimes the question is twisted in terms of port or starboard drift of the aeroplane, which can be worked out using wind direction. So in northern hemisphere, if aeroplane is experiencing a starboard, starboard drift, he is flying towards low pressure area. And if he experiences a port drift, then he is flying from low to high pressure area. We can add one more twist to this question on altimeter reading. So in northern hemisphere, if aeroplane is experiencing starboard drift, he is flying towards low pressure area and altimeter will overread and you can make out this by using high low high principle. So a lot of variable can be injected for questions on by Bellot's law. Geostrophic wind versus Coriolis force. The formula for Coriolis force is as shown on the screen. It is important to remember this formula. Since this can help you in answering questions related to effect of latitude and density on wind speed. 
From this formula, it is evident that for a given value of Coriolis force, wind speed will increase if the latitude is lesser, that is near the equator, and the de if the density is less, that is at higher altitude. Now moving on to the gradient wind. The gradient wind is the mathematical modeling of winds blowing in and around curved isobars like in cyclone or anticyclone. And where there is a curved or circular motion involved, centrifugal force comes into play. Centrifugal force is experienced by all objects moving in circular path which tends to push the object radially outwards from the center of the circle. So gradient wind blows under the influence of three for forces. Pressure gradient force, Coriolis force and centrifugal force. Wind blows parallel to isobars but follows a curved path, not a straight path. In gradient wind, there are three forces. Pressure gradient force and Coriolis force will always oppose each other. But centrifugal force will assist or add to the Coriolis force in a cyclone, low or a depression and oppose the Coriolis force in an anticyclone or high. So this additional centrifugal force will tend to slow down the speed of winds in a cyclone, low or depression and accelerate the wind speed in an anticyclone or high for the same given pressure gradient force. Question can be based on this effect of centrifugal force on wind speed. So gradient wind in a cyclone, low or a depression would be weaker than geostrophic wind. And gradient wind in an anticyclone or high would be stronger than a geostrophic wind. This does not mean that the both type of wind is blowing at the same time. It is just that which wind modeling will give you what kind of prediction for wind speed. Antitriptic wind or cyclostrophic wind. Geostrophic or gradient wind. For both of them to be modeled, presence of Coriolis force is mandatory. So what about the winds in geographical areas within plus minus 15 degree latitude from the equator where Coriolis force is close to zero? So winds within plus minus 15 degree latitude from the equator where Coriolis force is negligible is called antitriptic wind or cyclostrophic wind. So hope this video has helped you in understanding the topic of geostrophic wind and gradient wind with absolute clarity. With this we have arrived at our destination. Subscribe the channel for more such informative videos on aviation. Follow me on Instagram link as shown on the screen. Do not forget to comment below did you like the video or if you want me to cover a specific topic. Hope to see you on board again for the next flight. Till then happy landings.